Hello world, happy summer. Eddie Small is on this episode. We recorded this back when he first started training for the Indy Mini. A little spoiler, he finished, he did well. Can't wait for you to hear all the great things he's doing at his school. I think I'm going to end it after this one because now I have had all of the 411 vodcast on and I am excited because they're all, uh, not only are they great educators, but they're just awesome friends of mine. So yeah. I've got to uh, welcome Mr. Eddie Small. And Eddie, I'll let you introduce yourself and where you're from. Yeah, uh, Eddie Small. I work for uh, Central Mind Career Center in Greenwood, Indiana. I'm the CT Innovation Coach. And this is my first year here. I guess we'll get into what you do as a CTE innovator. And uh, if you guys don't follow Eddie on like Facebook Live or his Twitter, like we'll share that all in the end. But <laughs> he has the coolest school and I classrooms do. in the state. I do. It's, it's a lot of fun. So just a, a little background. Um, I started as an educator in CTE. So my program at Rushville when I taught at the high school uh, was a CTE program. And... It was obviously audio video production and we'll get into that later, but I taught in a traditional high school. I didn't teach in a career center, but 10 years ago, before I worked at Central 9, I actually took classes in this building to get my licensure. So um, as a teacher, so it's kind of exciting, like it's a little full circle kind of uh, to kind of get back into um, that CTE environment. But um, I am really blessed to work with uh, pretty progressive staff. Um, our leadership team is awesome. Uh, they believe in pretty much what we do every day, which is just teaching kids skills. And we have 27 programs, so it, it can get crazy, like trying to more. You can think about like grade levels, you know, as you're trying to more from one grade level to the other when you do this type of work, when you're either coaching or, or doing any leadership position, um, you know, trying to more from auto mechanics to construction trades to dental assisting. Like it's a pretty it's pretty fun, obviously, because we get to do some creative and cool stuff. But uh it's a it's an interesting environment. That's all I'll say. But it, it is a lot of fun. Well, let's get to know you as both a teacher and a great human being. Um, so <laughs> let me start with question number one. What is your favorite color? Blue. Mine too. Good choice. Now you are a tech junkie, pretty similar to me. What's your favorite app that you're using nowadays? Oh, my favorite app right now. Oh, man, there's just so many. Oh, you're putting me on the spot. Um, I, Anchor is probably my favorite app just because of, and we talked about the the tool that Anchor provides to you as a podcaster, but um, it's probably my favorite app right now just because of ease of use. It, it, it's scary, stupid, simple, and I think that I think that's going to create a lot of um, what I would consider creators in the podcasting realm, and I'm excited about that. And I got to thank Eddie uh, publicly with all 10 people who watch this um, that... <laughs> That Eddie is the reason uh, he showed me Anchor, and now I am publishing this uh, with on all areas or platforms of podcasts and having a lot of fun with that. My next question is, what is your favorite class that you've taught? Audio video production is my favorite class that I've taught. Now, I, I do get to co-teach a little bit here, which is not. I tell you what, I really enjoy culinary here. Uh, and just like, obviously... I love food from, you know, all of the things that you can see on your screen. Um, but it, culinary is so fun. I almost feel like I'm on one of those cooking shows every time I go in there. Like all the kids are creating these really amazing dishes and we have great uh, educators here. So anytime I'm in that classroom, I'm really excited. Um, but obviously teaching audio video production um, for eight years, kind of the only class that I really got a chance to be a full time teacher in um, was my favorite. That's great. And, and those of you who are listening on the podcast, Eddie is by no means like huge and out of shape, which by the way, leads into my next question. Oh boy. Eddie <laughs> is training for the Indy mini. So what's your right. favorite part of running? Can none be an answer? Like I, I think people, and here's the deal, like people love running. I, I get it. I, I, I understand like the endorphins and like what it does to your body. I understand. I don't like it. I <laughs> you do realize the Indy mini is 13.1 miles, right? I'm, I'm pretty, yeah, I think I got that detail, but I've, that's been burned into me by Marcus Painter enough times. Um, but yeah, like he's created, so like my official training starts today. So, um, I've been like the last month and a half, I've just been like watching what I eat and trying to lose a little weight and, um, 
running on my own two or three miles here or there. And now like today is like, it's official. So like, <laughs> you want to have your last supper today, probably. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you know, getting running advice from Marcus is, is all nice oh. and all, but you know oh. what, when he's twice as tall as I am, right. like I'm, I'm just, yeah. yeah, I get it. No, I, I, mean, I understand. And like people that run for time, like, so I've tried to like get that out of my brain that I'm going to like run 10 minute miles or nine minute miles. Like, no, I, cause I don't like it that much. <laughs> Maybe I'll run faster cause I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> there you go. Just get done quicker. Right. Get it out of the way. All right. My next question is what's your favorite book? Oh, any Harry Potter book. Nice. I, everyone. Like I could read those things 15 times. And, uh, it, it was like one of the first true, like, I don't know. The first time I was actually exposed to reading, like when I was a kid and um, just continued to read them over and over and over again. <laughs> yeah. Very nerdy, but Harry Potter for sure. <laughs> I, I agree 100% with that. So now that everybody got to know you, let's start talking about yeah. your um, job, what, what a CTE innovator does from day to day. Right. Awesome. So uh, it's, it's very unique. And, and I think there aren't a whole lot of, you know, you always have this, there aren't a whole lot of me's out there. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen. So hopefully you can see that. Yep. Um, and we are basically just going to talk about what a CT innovation coach does and their role here in that career and technical environment. I think when I first started, this is the this is the first time they've had this position at the career center. This used to be a, what was considered a master teacher position. Um, so we had an educator that uh, was in charge of evaluations, was in a leadership role, um, and then did some technology small cluster training. Uh, with our school, which was which was pretty cool, and he did a great job. Um, but they wanted to move in a different direction when they morphed the position into what they are calling now the CTE Innovation Coach, which is me. So um, I had to do a lot of groundwork and research on what it looked like for um, this school in particular, and this being kind of my third year of doing this sort of thing out outside the classroom. Uh, it it's been really interesting. So we did a lot of groundwork and research. We talked to our teachers. We wanted to make sure we brought them in on every aspect of their trainings and professional development. Um, and I wanted to make sure I got to know them. Like, that's the first thing we do, right? We get to know them and um, we build relationships with them, which is great. And what we found is uh, in our teacher discovery was just basically a lot of teachers said, you know, I just need more time. Obviously every teacher wants more time. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, and they also really wanted to learn about Google, like everything about Google, Gmail, Google Calendar, Google Slides. Um, and there, and the best part about Central Nine and the best part about, I think, being in a career center is we're flexible to allow our educators to learn new stuff. Uh, I can't tell you how many times um, we get into a lot of this stuff and they don't they don't get to learn anything. Uh, and they were very open right at the beginning. Could we learn um, as much about Google as possible? So we created a resource page um, online, which is really cool. Uh, but I also wanted to like get really ambitious uh, for our goals as a school when I started here. Um, so our goal, this is our end year goal. Now I'll talk to you in, you know, April, May, June, if this ever happens, but um, we'd like all of our educators to be level one certified by the end of the year. Uh, so, I, I mean, as you know, that's a pretty incredible task, um, especially when we're asking all of them uh, to be level cert level one certified. So we have a website, you know, in that environment, they have virtual PD, um, we give them kind of topics if they're kind of looking for audio production, video production, digital storytelling, note taking apps, and we allow them to go in and kind of check those out. So, and then as they have questions, they can request a meeting with me. Uh, most people in this coaching role, uh, we kind of are familiar with what that looks like. So those are basic stuff I wanted to set up right out of the way as we got started. Um, and then we created kind of small group instructions where we facilitated the environment in Google Classroom had each group of teachers kind of inside a small group setting. So they got basically the virtual learning on Google Classroom and then we met as a small group. Um, but I also get to do like really cool projects uh, with the staff. Um, our culinary teachers had asked for some type of innovative technology that would allow them to do their hands-on demonstration. But as you know, like a kitchen can get crowded. So uh, they have seven or eight students like trying to crowd around the instructor to check out, you know, this chicken being properly dressed. Well, we put monitors up in the uh, culinary um, kitchen and we have obviously an IPVO and like a, a Microsoft Surface here. So he's just basically 
you know, screen grabbing that IPVO to the uh, monitor. And we have two monitors in our kitchen and they can be flexible on what space that they use, but you can see, you know, multiple students checking out the monitor while he's doing that hands-on demonstration. So just allowing them to kind of be more flexible in their space. And uh, our culinary teacher absolutely loves it. He's like, this is exactly what I needed uh, because he knows like you could have two or three around and paying attention, but there may be two or three other kids that just can't see it and, and they miss it. Um, and that visual cue is really important for them. Even turns it into like Iron Chef and, and cooking show right. kind of thing. Like <laughs> now you're yeah. on the spot. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And it's really cool. Like, cause then he can do instruction. Like kids can come over, they could try something out. He can then instruct them and he doesn't have to be standing right on top of them to do that. Um, and as you know, I'm a big audio video guy. So when somebody comes and says, Hey, do you have a video project you can work on? I'm like, absolutely. Uh, let's, let's roll with this. Like I have an idea for this. Let's try it. And like I said, they absolutely love it. Some other things that we get to do in this role or that I get to do in this role is to, uh, make some of my teachers, YouTube stars, <laughs> uh, our, our auto mechanic teacher, our auto service teacher, he is absolutely amazing. Um, but he wanted to kind of break down his lessons virtually, um, on YouTube. So we have a whole, this is a, an entire, um, break rotor inspection, um, and check and, and resurfacing rotors and doing scratch tests. So this was like a 30 minute after school project. I, we went in, we filmed him, uh, in that setting. He did it, you know, basically from start to finish in a full 30 minutes. And then we broke it down into two or three minute videos, sometimes less than that, that he can then use inside Google classroom. Um, something that they've never had before. So he was really thrilled with being, <laughs> I think his end line is like, now I'm on YouTube, you know, like he's, he was really excited about that. Anytime I can give my teachers uh, that experience, I'm going to do it. I love the fact that you took a 30 minute video and broke it down into, you know, two or three minutes because I have a formula for students that, and, and sometimes it doesn't just relate to students. Sometimes it's adults too, that right. Their minutes of attention for YouTube equals their age divided by two. So if yeah. you're talking to a 14 year old, they right. might watch a seven minute video. Well, maybe. And, yes, exactly. <laughs> and right. then I always say, you know, plus or minus two minutes based off of the yeah. kid. Um, yeah. Like two minutes, like a kid will look at that and just say, oh, yeah, I got two minutes. But then right. they'll watch all of them right in a row and not realize yep. they just watched so they, minutes. So they spent a half an hour, right? So there are 10 of these. Um, and obviously we edit them down. So that took some time, like the 30 minute, he did it all in one and we went back through and edited, um, just the content. But as you know, as a teacher starts instructing, like it would be really nice to, especially these demonstrations that they're doing, you know, in my role here, we're doing a lot of demonstrations. We're doing a lot of labs. Uh, he can throw these into Google classroom. So when a kid says, Hey, I had a question about how we removed that bracket. Well, the kid can just pull up the YouTube video and watch it two or three times. You know, I, that's how I learn yeah. <laughs> most of the time. And I, and I sure you would, you would agree. So I, it really has been a, a neat experience for our teachers in, in that aspect. We also get to, like I said, I'm the display guy. I'm the visual guy. You know, we have tons of displays now in our, in our welding instruction lab. Um, our teacher came and said, Hey, I'd like to put up some displays. I'd like to show some content with standards or um, what topic that we're covering today. So you know, we put up two 65 inch TVs. We allowed him to use his projector to split a CNC machine. Uh, it really was a, it really was a cool project. And what's best about this project is we bought the TVs and we bought the cable. Uh, everything else was done by our students. The brackets were welded and made by our students. Our precision machining kids, you know, put some of that stuff together. So we're saving money on kind of the, the mounting material and labor, because what do you do? You get a student on a ladder and you have them throw cable around. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously this is, this was like an all in hands-on project that involved our kids. So, uh, and that's what I like about it the most, I think. Or how many students will attend this, um, building? We have 1200 kids, roughly 1200 students, uh, and nine sending schools. So when you're thinking of the Southside Indy, you know, we've got Greenwood, Southport, you know, those types of schools are, are all sending kids, um, to our career center. And they're here for either half day. They're either in the AM session or the PM session. How many teachers do you work with? Uh, we have 30, give or take 35. Let's talk about the sandbox, which is what I went live with the other day, which was kind of fun. Like I don't normally go on Facebook live, but it was pretty cool to hop on and kind of show off, uh, kind of show off what we're working on. Kurt Schleibaum, which you know, uh, is obviously an amazing, amazing educator who was an innovator and had built one of these augmented reality sandboxes. You throw sand in the sandbox, 
projector projects an image that kind of shows topography as the sand is moving with a Microsoft Connect. And I was just in awe when I saw this three years ago. Um, so I had an opportunity to kind of build one with our tech staff at Shelbyville. But when I got here, I was like, oh, all of these different programs could build individual pieces of the box. So our construction trades kids built the box. My welding students built the bracket for the projector and the connect. Our computer programming kids programmed the um, actual Linux box that runs all the software. Our landscaping class had to do calculations on how much sand the box needs and where we could purchase the sand. Uh, they did experiment with making our own like kinetic sand, uh, which obviously was a major failure. It just ended up being like concrete and mud. Uh, <laughs> it was cool, right? Like the kids got the experience like, oh, we can make our own. We don't have to spend $800 on a five gallon bucket right. of sand, um, which, <laughs> you know, is, is its own little kind of uh, barrier that we're trying to figure out. Like, how are we going to fill this box? Are we going to fill it with play sand? Are we going to use kinetic sand? Um, but it's all, but it's very close to being finished and finalized. So, but I, these are just a few pictures that we took with our construction trade class as they were building the box, uh, which was really neat. And I get to do other cool stuff with, with staff. We, we did, um, you know, some design learning, uh, uh, you know, PEDs, we did breakout boxes right at the first of the year. Uh, and they're, they are into it. Um, especially the, the, the aluminum foil design, uh, thinking design learning lab we did. <laughs> Here's one of our educators as they built uh, kind of a, a communicator. They wanted kind of the ultimate communicator in school. Um, and other teachers, you know, built like personal remotes to do things inside their classrooms. And it was just a really fun activity to get them excited about um, the new semester. I wanted to do something kind of fun right out of the gate when they came back. I think we all sit in PDs and we're like, OK, let's get into our classroom. We're ready to work. So I wanted to kind of I wanted to end the PD strong with something really fun, which this is kind of the aluminum foil design uh, thinking challenge. Uh, obviously, we'll end on the giant project of the year, which was transforming this room, uh, which was kind of a makeshift production area. You know me, I'm all about audio video production. So how could we transform this room into a studio? They were using it as a studio as you see it in its form here. Um, but it also turned into a bit of a storage closet for our visual communications program. Obviously, they're doing a lot of graphics, a lot of vinyl, um, creating graphic material. Uh, so they've got all of their <laughs> all their rolls of paper and, and tape and, and all that fun stuff. But they also had equipment that they haven't really touched in a few years because it wasn't installed correctly or it just didn't work. Um, and the space was pretty tiny. So they brought me in and said, hey, Ed, you're the audio video guy. We know you do the studios. Like, could you help us? And I'm like, absolutely. Like, this will be like my first big project of the year. And uh, after a few months, this is what we turned it into, wow. um, which is really cool, right? So we, we, you know, said, hey, is there another place we can put the storage items? And they said, yes, they obliged. Now, the soundproofing, we didn't really mess with the soundproofing in the room. Um, that, that has always kind of been there, as you can see over the time and over years, like students chip away at it and peel away at it. Um, we do have a plan for that. We hope to kind of cover it with some type of canvas, canvas maybe some colored canvas to just create um, a smooth surface uh, instead of the chipped <laughs> soundproofing. But we do have, we are trying to kind of work on, on a plan for that. Um, and then I get to do what I do best, right? So even though I'm no longer teaching audio video production, I get a chance to teach these kids video skills inside their visual communications class because they do have an interactive media component. So this has kind of been really rewarding for me as an educator to be able to get back into the classroom and work with these students on some of the new equipment that they now have. Man, this is so cool. So you <laughs> took, took a storage closet and then right. totally flipped it. And now you guys have got a great resource there. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. <clears throat> yeah, so, and it's like I said, it, it takes a few months and it wouldn't happen and it wouldn't work, Seth. It never works, right? Unless you have your teachers on board, but you also have the leadership and administration to be like, absolutely 100%, we need this because these things cost money. <laughs> and, and unfortunately, like we know the best stuff costs money. And to get the best, we have to have at least leadership in the building that says, let's do this. Like, I, I know that it's going to cost us some money. I know there's going to be an initial investment, 
but let's do it. And I, and I think we can do it at C9 and we did it. And, uh, you know, it, it's really easy. My job is like super simple when I have, you know, those people around me, especially all of our educators and our leadership team that says, yep, let's do it. Let's go. You know, and I, I love that. I think I love that atmosphere of, of what this place can, can really bring. And the fact that something like this in the studio is sustainable and you guys, yes, it was a lot of work up front, but this is going to last you guys for quite a while. It, right. it, you guys did it right. And it looks great. In closing, I'm starting to end every episode asking the, uh, asking you, what is your definition of success? Putting me on the spot here, Seth, <laughs> my definition of success. If we're able to leave things better than we found them, I, I honestly, like I've said that, I think I've said that enough times that you know, I've, I've, this is my third district that I've worked for. Um, and I've always wanted to make sure wherever I am or whatever I'm doing, that I will walk away leaving things better than I found them. And to me, that's a success. Like I can step away knowing that they're going to have, students are going to have something, educators are going to have something that they didn't have before. So yeah, I would say, I would say if you are able to leave anything better than you found it, you've done a pretty good job. I agree a hundred percent, man. That was beautiful. All right. Now, where can people contact you on social media to see all the cool stuff you're doing, but also maybe ask some questions? Yeah. Um, I am at small Indiana on Twitter. Um, kind of the easiest and most frequent social media that I use. Um, but just Google me, Eddie small Facebook. Um, but small Indiana on Twitter is probably the best place. And I will make sure I put all of his links down below so you can easily click on it or find them on the podcast. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Eddie, for joining Thank me you. and sharing all the great things you're doing down in the Indianapolis area. Please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll talk to you later. Thanks, Seth.